Foster Thomas. I'm Dasha. I'm Tosh the Drummer. I'm Claire Casserin. I'm Ryan Oates. We're a beautiful dropout. This is Baby Jake. I'm Kid Quill. I'm Curtis Cruz. I'm Sugar Pit. I am Christian Gates. I'm Hayden. I am Carly Hansen. I'm Medium Bill. I'm Philly. I'm Anthony Russo. I'm Eric Krasno. I'm Bradley. And this is an experiment. Annika. Bradley. We're back. We're so back. We did it. We are back and better than ever. That's what I'm talking about. And you just got off a plane from New York. I did. And how you feeling? Tired, but great. Good time? Great time. Shot some videos? Shot one singular video. Drove upstate. It was beautiful. Um, And shot in the city. And had a great time. All my best friends moved there, unfortunately, but also fortunately, because it's a great excuse to get on a plane. And yeah, you can be a little bit bi-coastal. Yeah. Why not? Why not? Got plenty of couches to sleep on. And let's just give a shout out real fast to who you shot with, because he's the man. Jonah Mazur. Where's the camera? Right, right there. there. Hi, camera. Jonah Mazur, you are the best in the game. I'll tell you it till the day you die. Please he's, don't die. He's so good. He's the best. Um, he's really the best. Yeah, I've been watching all of his stuff and keeping up, and I feel like I'm always chasing things to look as good as what he's doing. He's so he's good. He's just like somebody who... He's like fearless. Mm -hmm. He'll take on so much. And it's like, if I have one thing in my calendar for a day, I'm like, well, that's the day. Yeah. And even if it's an hour, I'm like, that's my day. And he just like stockpiles, like just goes, goes, goes. And he gets everything done and he does it with a smile on his face. And everything ends up being incredible. And he's a huge source of inspiration for me. He's amazing. He's so good. So good. So shout out to you, dude. Shout out to you, dude. (laughs) So it's been a minute. This is my first podcast back Let's in go. a very long time since the accident. Since the accident. Can we talk about the accident? Because yeah. Because who knows about the accident? So technically there's an episode coming out right before this. Okay. That's just me talking about it a little bit. Technically. But if you haven't seen it, I got into a pretty bad car accident. Brain is uh, working really hard to remember pending. things. Yeah. Yep. Pending is a great, great way to put it. Yeah. Um, got pretty beat up. Had to take a hiatus for the first time in almost three years of this podcast. Did it feel kind of good to take a break and be really excited to come back to something that you love? Yes and no. It was exciting to come back because I get to talk to my friends and stuff. But this is like the least stressful thing I ever do in my life. I love this more than anything. Yeah, you get to hang with your friends. I I said a conversation for 40 minutes with my friends without a phone. Yeah, it's pretty good. You can't beat it. You really can't. Um. But we're back and... I'm so happy that you're alive and well. Thank you. Thank you. I remember, like, I think it was Om- Omer. Mm-hmm. Omer. He told me about the accident and I came to the jam or I came over. No, I came to the jam and then we hung out the next day. And like, so everyone can gauge like just how uh, bad the accident was. Bradley and I talked for like two hours and the next day I was like, oh my God, yeah, let's continue the conversation we rested. And he's like, what do you mean? Like, what do we talk about? And I'm like, Bradley, we talked for two hours and he's like, cool, I don't remember. I was like, okay, well, we can hit resume or yeah. we can start over. Yeah, it was a refresh. Here. Like, yeah. So scary, really scary. Very scary. Definitely life-changing. Um, showed me how much I love so many parts of my life and showed me how many parts of it I just would not i don't need you know yeah so yeah. definitely a good time to throw away a lot of the bullshit and yeah, wipe the get back clean. to this so we're here i'm happy to be we're, here we're slowly recovering yes, but sir. i got to the point where i needed i needed this again this the first thing my doctor says is you have to do things that are gonna make you really really work to get that memory back because it's gonna be hard and it's gonna take a long time yeah and there's nothing that's gonna make me work more than a podcast that the world is seeing so yes and if you forget anything it's documented exactly you can go back and you can <laughs> be like so that's true. what we talked about it's actually so smart that's damn i didn't think about it that way so calculated of you that's yeah no 100 mm-hmm. um, percent on purpose mm-hmm. i've been planning this one totally so fill us in where have you been who who, who are who are you now where's annika um back in the shokes so happy about it she's home I'm home. Um, spent a lot of time in New York over the last three months. Mm-hmm. Um, felt really, really good to escape and be really overstimulated and then get excited to come back to ground and quiet. Um, a lot has changed in the last three months. Like my life sort of flipped on its head. 
Um, and for better, for worse, still trying to figure it out, but I'm trying to look at it as the glass half full and have yeah. a more optimistic outlook on the changes and sort of surrender and just adapt as I will. Yeah. Um, but New York was a really good time. This, this last time was a little bit more spontaneous and, um, free. And of course, like Joan and I shot the video, but I also just got to like reconnect with my friends and, um, not hold myself to a very like unrealistic, a uh, standard of productivity mm. and just enjoy myself and like be guided by whatever I, it is that was guiding me when I woke up every day. Yeah. Whereas New York trip before sort of turned into something that it, I wasn't anticipating. Like I went there for a wedding and then it sort of morphed into a work trip that yeah. became really stressful and crazy and also really exhilarating and fun. Um, but I was like sort of finding the balance between both and like finding what I liked and what I didn't like and came back and um, went through a breakup, going through a breakup, um, which is something I've never done before. Hmm. So that's been an interesting sort of um, like it's been like a I've been like my own case study. Yeah. For the last couple months, which has been uh, eye opening and really hard and positive too. It's a little bit of both. Do you feel like something like that is is almost necessary in order to shake up what this experience as a musician looks like for you? Do you, do you think that there's utility in it? Or do you think right now you're at the point where you can't find the utility in it quite yet? Um, I think you get to make that choice, mm-hmm. right? I think you get to either dwell um, or you can put one foot in front of the other and march on. Yeah. Um, and I think you should allow space for both. Like on the days when I wake up and I'm paralyzed, I let myself be paralyzed. And on the days when I'm like, okay, no, I'm going to turn this into art or writing or whatever it is. Um, I let that have its own flow and take on its own life. Um, and of course, like, I think when you're this like starving artist, there's a part of you that almost creates chaos when there isn't any and um i found myself doing that internally for the last however many years um just to spark something where i i felt you know um like i needed to pick up a pen or play the piano and it's really it's it's so interesting when you are grounded and good and solid and you can kind of expect what the next day holds it's like very I'm a very regimented person, so for me, um, having that structure underneath my feet felt really, really good. But I did seek out chaos in other ways in order to like spark a fire. Yeah, and um, I kind of liked having that choice where I, where I was like, I get to yeah. you know put fuel on the fire when I want to. But now it's sort of like a forced, it's the fire's burning. Yeah, so it's like okay, either get burned or like make something out of it. Um, and it's been good. Like, it's been really good for the music, I think. Um, and that sort of dominoes into a lot of other changes in your life because all of the structure that was there falls apart and the structure isn't just there when you're with the person. It's there when you're not with the person and you sort of fall into a routine and especially, you know, just the nature of the pandemic of like having to create some sort of rigidity in your day in order to like find a sense of calm and all of the, the madness. Um, it was really, it was like a, I was self-soothing, you know, by, by doing that. And now I'm like, oh, I don't need to be perfect every day. And all of these walls have fallen down. So it's like, there's more space to play and I'm figuring out what the, how I want to play. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. I think that's part of the reason I asked is you and I are part of what we connected on when we first met is we're very, very similar in the fact that we we enjoy having the ability to pick these outside thrills in order to bring some new inspiration or just that feeling of uh, energy back into our life. Yeah, and absolutely. And then both of us were, you know, within a year or so apart, had this experience of of losing the person that allowed us to make those choices yeah. or, or at least the structure that allowed us to yeah. make those choices. And it came without us being able to say yes or no to it anymore. Yeah. Totally. And I feel like as much as both of us love the thrill, it's a very different feeling when the thrill is not a choice. Yeah. Um, it's like getting pushed out of an airplane. We versus have to learn jumping. how to say no. Yeah. 
and not because you have something over there waiting for you because you feel like you have to, but because you want to. Absolutely. And that's, it's a, I'm trying to figure out how to do that confidently and comfortably. Um, and like I said, it's just a really interesting sort of case study for myself about myself and it's good. It's like these are formative years and I'm I'm learning and Absolutely. you get to now really learn maybe even the hard way sometimes what you like and what you don't like. Mm -hmm. But it's a very necessary part of your character development and your growth and um and good songs come out of it. So great. My songs. hands are up. <laughs> and I think there's this idea that we build into our head that we have to grow up so quickly and anything that falls is therefore not going to be obtainable in the future. And yes. we see that that's complete fucking bullshit. Yeah, that's the fear talking. Yeah, That's absolutely. like the fear part. And it's interesting when you go through something like that where you share, you're sharing a life with somebody, um, how they still, even if their physical presence isn't there anymore, they're still with you mm. on, like all of the time. Like I learn so much and I carry an insurmountable amount of love and I I feel that with me wherever I go, like when I'm making choices and what what I'm doing and and how I show up in the world. Like he's he's in there forever. Yeah. Um, and it's scary to think that something could really be gone because it's like you're mourning somebody who's still alive, which is like almost worse. Yeah. Um, but it's powerful, and I feel more gratitude than I do loss. You know, it, it wavers, it goes in and out and something As it like should. this the scale tips sometimes, but um really I just have so much gratitude to know what that love feels like and um to have it, you know, in in me now forever. Yeah. And for somebody who's slightly further out from that, I think it gets to this point where the appreciation for the other person and the experiences you gain from them grows, whether they're supposed to be in your life anymore or not. And I feel like the only way to make such a shitty feeling situation have use, which if you don't, then you're just wasting one of the most precious yeah. lessons you could ever have, is do it a little better next time. Is, you know, when you do have that spark with somebody again, you hopefully gain the information and, and you don't go into it thinking that you're a perfect person because you learn that you're not. Yeah. And anybody who's in a long-term relationship of any kind if you think you're a perfect person and everything's their fault, you're just fucking wrong. No, it's been so interesting to think about what I would have done differently or how I could have communicated certain things better. Um, and it's like, it's always, you know, 2020 retrospectively. And so that those things are starting to reveal themselves more obviously to me now. Mm. And it's fascinating. And I'm, I'm not like, I don't feel shame towards myself or like anger it's more just like oh you never noticed that before maybe you did unconsciously but you never had that conversation with yourself absolutely because it was still working yeah maybe it wasn't but it was like the train was still moving yeah. you know so it was like well why do i have to like self analyze what's going on right now if whatever i'm doing is working and then you get out of it and you're like oh i could have done this thing better but it's great because you know you know what to do next time yeah you know a hopefully. little bit better oh hopefully that's and i but i think that's a conscious effort just like you were saying getting over this is it's a conscious effort to decide do i need today to rest or do i need today to to use this for my inspiration yeah. you, you have to be conscious of who you are and, and what you've gained out of it and when there's a problem that was currently in your relationship that you blamed the other person for and once they're gone, it's still in your life. You go, oh, fuck. You know, sometimes it takes these really tough situations to realize that there's always something we could be doing better. Yeah. Um, Did that come naturally for you? Like, was that an intuitive dialogue you had with yourself after your breakup where hmm. you felt you felt that? Or is that you a year later being like, oh, now this is starting to make sense and this yeah. is what I'm doing? I think I think it it was a process. I I had to build in a regimen into my life to understand that 90% of my issues as a human being, as a partner, as a family member, as a friend, are things that 100% can be taken care of 
if I do these few steps every day. Mm. And it was learning what those steps are. And when something works, it's putting that in the file cabinet in your brain and saying, I'm going to fucking do this every day. Yeah. For me, if I don't go on my run every day, if I don't go to the gym every day, if I'm not going surfing a few days a week and some dude cuts me off in traffic and I'm an asshole, or if I meet somebody who I love and I'm addicted to them one day and I realize I didn't do these steps, mm. then I can't put blame anywhere but myself. I know there's things that I do that work. And if I don't do those then who is there to blame outside of the only person that can make those things happen? Right. So it's the process of figuring out what those yes. things are. For me, it was. And and I guess everybody's different. But yeah, for me, it was definitely a process. And mine was such a long relationship with somebody who maybe we're not meant to be together, but I wish her everything great in life. And I hope she has it and she deserves it. And the fact that I now get to be a better partner. Yeah is going to make me, you know, that much more of a man, if you will, in my situation or a better human being or whatever it is. And I I know I can do it better now. Yeah. And I also know that if I'm not doing it better, I really got to take a big look and make sure I'm doing all of these steps that make me the person I deserve to be for myself. Yeah. Um, God, self-awareness is such a superpower. Oh, I had to relearn how to love myself. A hundred percent. I fucking hated myself for a while mm-hmm. and got to the point where I walked out of here to go to the the jam one day and I told myself, and we, we kind of had this conversation. Um, and I said, today is the last day I'm ever not going to love myself. Mm. And I meant it for the first time. Mm. I said it verbally and I said it to Tristan. And that was one of the more important days in my life for many reasons, which you know about. Yep. Um, and that I really had to 100% actually believe and mean it when I said that. And I put in the work and I worked my ass off and I lost a fuck ton of weight. And I found all these different things that made me feel healthy. The way I eat, the way I work out, the people I hang out with. I will not surround myself with the wrong people anymore because I've done it. And I appreciate all those people because that's how I grew. Mm -hmm. But there's certain people in my life like you and Tristan and Griffin and a slew of other people that every time I'm with them, I feel like I'm gaining something. Yeah. If I'm not gaining something from the room I'm in, why am I in that fucking room? Well, and how do you feel when you leave? That was a huge thing for me with friendships, especially. It was like, I'm a talker. I will fucking yap your ear off left and right. And if like, I hate the feeling of leaving somebody's presence and being like, oh, no, did I overshare? Mm. Did I say something that's then going to be weaponized later down the line? Like, can I trust this person? Because my default is to trust people because I know that I can be trusted and it's super counterintuitive to go into something believing that that's not somebody else's intention. Absolutely. You know, so um, leaving somewhere and being like getting in my car and exhaling and being like, oh, I'm not, that was, that was awesome. That I love them. That was great. I can't wait till I see them next time. Hmm. And also when it's like, it's a mutual exchange of energy, like somebody isn't just taking it, but they're responding to it because they're present. And that's huge in, in any kind of relationship. Absolutely. And do you feel like now, you know, a few steps out from these situations and obviously still grieving and, and still in this ebb and flow, do you feel like now being in rooms as a artist and a writer and a musician you're able to have this this new version of a connection with these other people around you? Do you think it's it's changed how you interact with your community? Great question. I I think you sort of exhibit a different kind of energy when you are like an isolated unit. Hmm. Um, and I think whether people realize they're reading that, everyone is reading that. Like even... You know, I get approached all the time just being out in the world, but even being in New York the last few days, like, obviously you're interfacing with a lot more people. Like, it's very dense. Yeah. (laughs) When you leave the house, there's people everywhere. So I guess with greater exposure comes greater opportunity to be approached. But my goodness, it was like crazy. And I was just doing me. Like, I was just grabbing a coffee in the morning or going for a walk or whatever. And I was just being approached all the time. And I was like, and I went back to my friend's apartment and I was like, like, I was like, what am I wearing? I was like, am I like wearing something crazy right now? Like, what's going on? She was like, no. She's like, when I went through my breakup, it was the same thing. Like, I don't know if it's this 
this unseen openness that you're exhibiting, but it's something switches. And of course, I think it changes your interactions with people because everything is open to becoming anything. Absolutely. You know, and I guess that theme is always there, but um, even more so when you're just moving as an isolated human and you're not attached to anything or anyone. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's cool. It's a little scary. It's a little scary because I am like such a people pleaser. Um, and so I want to say yes to everyone all the time, but that's the thing is like, I'm learning my own boundaries now <laughs> and like not letting my social battery die every two Did seconds. That shut off. Oh, let me check real fast. Pause. Sweet. Sweet. Right, we got like two minutes out. That's fine. Um, what were we talking about? Oh, I don't even know. Devastation. Optimistic devastation. So we, we, my camera died. That's my fault. Brad Sorry about fault. that. Um, again, I don't remember what we were talking about because it's me. So let's just keep going. Let's just keep going. So are you allowed to talk about some of the great things that have happened in the past few months? Oh my like, God. I'm so allowed because I'm a free woman. Like the music that like you came out with music. that went fucking crazy. Oh my God. Thank you. So will um, you tell everybody what you've done? Yeah. I started putting out music again. God bless. Bad damn time. And um, it feels amazing. And I'm putting out my first EP in five years on November 1st. I'm yeah. so unbelievably excited. I opened for my friend Jonah Murray at the El Rey a couple weeks ago. It was so fun. Like, best night of my life. I met so many beautiful people. There's a lot of fucking people there, too. It was a lot of people. And... Um, I think being on a stage and having a good sound system and playing with a band, like going back to the band roots, is just such an important reminder for me because you know this, like being in the music industry, there's so much bullshit that happens and it's such a tumultuous ride that to like remember your purpose is so, it just like reignites the flame again. Mm -hmm. And um, walking out on the stage and being like, oh, I'm home. Okay, cool. It's just like grounding. So sick. And it was so fun. And I woke up that morning with no voice. Yep. I woke up sick. And you were sick as fuck. I was like so devastated. And I was like, okay, well, don't have a panic attack because that's not going to help anything. Mm -hmm. But I woke up and I tried to do my vocal warm ups at like 8 a.m. Because you know that feeling when you wake up in the middle of the night and you swallow and you're uh. like, I'm so fucked. Yeah. So I'm like throwing back NyQuil, Mucinet, like anything that yeah. my like cupboard had from like nine years ago. I'm just like chugging it. Yeah. And then I tried to get up and do vocal warms and no sound came out of my mouth. Oh. And I was like, well, we are not doing this. So I texted everyone I know and I was like, <laughs> give me the weirdest tips in the book. Got a nebulizer, went on vocal rest all day, got a steroid shot of my ass and the sound came back. And thank God for it, because I was mortified. God damn, that could have been fucked. It could have been fucked. Absolutely I thought fucked. it was going to be fucked. I was like, I'm just going to like, I'm just going to fucking thug it out. You know? God damn. And I mean, from the videos, you fucking own the stage. Like you were, you were really home. You knew what the fuck you were doing and you, you showed it to everybody. And that thank had to you. just be, especially knowing that you were going in there with, you know, it weighed against your favor considering you were sick as a dog Yeah, and you went and you kicked ass and you sounded great too. You didn't Thank sound you. like you were sick. Thanks. Like that's, I could have sounded better, crazy. but whatever. It's... Yeah. But you're always going to fucking say that. I know you. totally you're always, always going to say that. No, nothing's ever good enough. What do no. you mean? And of course not. your shit's going crazy right now and everybody loves it. Thank and you. And I've had so many people bring up your name in the past few months. Like so many people. Really? Um, Oh my god! Yeah, I mean, you're you're killing it. Thank you. You're fucking killing it. Thanks. Are you allowed to talk about your feature? Oh, sure. Because we can completely. They don't have to know we're even talking about this right now. So that's uh, up to you. We can talk about it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> what do you want to know? <laughs> I want to just tell them what what happened. Um, I the the G song. Yeah. Um, yeah. My my homie Austin, who produces all my music. He's like my twin soul, best person in the world. Um, he called me and he was like, what are you doing right now? And I was like, driving. And he was like, well, can you drive over to my place and sing a vocal on this song? And I was like, sure. So I went over there and I sang 
in my head, which was an interpolation of a tattoo song from many mm-hmm. years ago, and um, had no idea what was going to happen. And I was in Switzerland, and uh, I got a call, and they were like, the song's coming out. And I was like, fantastic. And then the album dropped, uh, G's album, Freak Show, fantastic album. Everyone go listen. Jeezy, everybody. And um, and it dropped, and then the song wasn't on it. And I called everyone, and I was like, hold on a damn second. What's going on? And they were like, well, the sample hasn't been cleared yet. Oh, fuck. And I was like, perfect. Really glad I set my fucking six o'clock alarm for it coming out at 9 p.m. in L.A. Awesome. Knowing you, I'm you're gonna waking go up then anyways. I totally was already up. Don't tell anyone. <laughs> and um, <laughs> I was like eating oatmeal. You probably done like, <laughs> You already did a nine mile run by then. <laughs> no, I was getting dressed for that though. <laughs> um, and uh, and then it came out like three days later, and it was great. So like, I just needed a win. You know, it had been a really, really, really tough year. And he's an incredible artist, super talented and um, just honored to be a part of it. Crazy. Yeah. I mean, that's somebody that a lot of us grew up listening to. Yeah. And I mean, that for you to be on a song with somebody like that means that you have to bring something to the table that they could not bring. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, it was it was really, really surreal experience. And um, we've worked on some more music since that and it was a a really cool cool experience to be in the studio with him and see his grind and see how he does it and and run ship and also you know treats everybody with the utmost respect and admiration and um is just a very very open but also incredibly firm in all of the right ways and just a, a veteran you know been doing it forever and knows how to run ship that's super inspiring so sick and it's cool to think that one day somebody's going to be like, I went and cut a song and it was on Annika's record. Fingers crossed, man. That's the goal. Um, if, if when, I'm going to say when, yeah, there when we I'm go. successful, I want to put as many people on the map as possible. There are so many like unbelievably talented people who just don't get the spotlight yeah. shined on them. And I like, like that's what Ed Sheeran has done like he's put on so many and like even taylor like bringing artists on tour in the way that she has like just highlight the people who deserve to be winning you know that's a huge goal of mine i and this is something i've fucking harped on and i will continue to harp on if you have a famine mentality in this industry you will absolutely lose a hundred percent of the time because we are no longer in an industry where you need to be the other everybody can win there is Literally, you can go, you can go, and I say this a million times. You can go on Spotify right now and find somebody with ten million monthly listeners a thousand times over every single day that you've never heard of, and that will continue to grow. So why are you, why does anybody feel like somebody's fan that that somebody that somebody else's fan is their fan and not can't be yours as totally. well? It's such bullshit. Yeah, I mean, it's like it all comes from a place of fear, right? Like this this system is so oversaturated, and so many people are chasing the same thing. But my grandma always said to me, there's a seat for every ass. And I'll take that to the grave. I absolutely. There is room for everybody. Like, find, it's like you said, like, your self-love journey and, like, being able to come home to yourself and and know that you're just doing your thing. Yeah. And if people rock with it, that's awesome. If they don't, wish them well. Cool. It's not for them. Everyone has their taste. Like, There's so many people and you need such a small percentage of it to be able to make this a career where you get to wake up every day and have the choice to make music or not absolutely and the fact that people think everybody needs to be on your side is human first of all no no one's ever gonna always be on your side no and that's anything in life that is as a friend you can be in a room with 15 people that love you and 20 people that hate you and all you're going to think about is the 20 people versus the fact that you don't even have enough time to give the 15 people hugs totally no one mean comment on a post with 100 nice ones and i'm like (gasps) You know what I mean? Some people just need to, I, maybe that's just a time and an experience thing and who you're surrounded by, but we're lucky enough that this little community that we built is so not famine mentality oriented. Everybody puts everybody on. I don't know a single person who goes to these jams yeah. that is in a band without somebody else that they met there. No, Literally that's, everybody. And that's that's why the jam is so sacred. It is really so fucking sacred. Like I... Like, I've been going out more now just, you know, because I can. But 
that it's the same thing like you drive away from somewhere and you're like how do I feel and that's huge for me right now is just like how do I feel after this interaction or this thing I did and I look forward to the jam every week that I know I have the opportunity to go because it's a bunch of like-minded, incredibly talented people and nobody is fighting for the spotlight. Absolutely. Like you work together, like seeing musicians lock in, like someone starts a groove and instead of being like, hey, like I wanted to start the next thing or I wanted to be on bass or whatever, it's like you sync up and you just like ride their way for a second and it creates something so individual and magical and special and you watch the energy shift in the room too, like... Even like even the dancing part that's now yeah. become more of a weekly thing. Like yeah. I love watching people's walls come down. Mm. Like what a gift to be able to like open up a space where you can watch people let go. Yeah. You know? And to think about for so long, it was like four of us who were willing to dance. It was me. It was you. It was Noah and maybe a few other people at most. Now you get this room full of people that maybe don't know anybody. They feel uncomfortable. They yeah. feel like an other. And then you start dancing and everybody's just there together and it's this shared experience and you get to be with these people that are so fucking talented. Yeah. It is just not, I feel like, I feel like I wish everybody who's watching this could feel that experience. And, and obviously, hopefully they have their own version of that. Yeah. But I feel so lucky that we were able to find and build this community because that's a big part of it is you don't last at that jam if you're not an open good person yes because everybody else yes. is and also what a fucking honor to be somebody else's permission slip mm. like what an honor to like get up lose the fear of being perceived and like be an animal mm. like and then someone else in the corner who like was afraid to take their jacket off and start jumping they see you do it and then that gives them the green light like oh this is safe yeah, and like, we're, this is, like, let your head down. This is safe. Like, we're in there. We're in there. Fucking sweating balls. This looking is to music. Yes. Like this is fucking. This is the least serious thing in the world. This is good company and music. Like, let yourself. And there's so many other environments where you are not going to feel like someone is passing you that slip to be mm -hmm. able to like let go. So when you have the opportunity to do it, like fucking do it and then be the reason somebody else does it yes because it just opens up this portal for everyone and it's so incredible to be immersed in and then to give it to somebody else yes. like oh it's this prime example example of lead by example yeah and and i really think that this industry needs more opportunity to see people love each other and see what growth can come out of it. You look at Feli, who's been to a million of them, and you see now he's his whole touring band, at least 75% of it, are people he met at yeah, that jam. fucking Tyler. And Tyler's music. I, all of these people are, I mean, the community, I, I really feel like I'm watching some fucking Laurel Canyon documentary. Oh my God. Every time totally, I'm there. Totally. I try to explain what it is to somebody and I'm like, you just got to be there. You just got to be there. And I love, like, I've it's like the ecstatic dance class that I take. Yeah. Like, I love taking my friends and not telling them what it is um, for the people who I know need it the most. Mm. And at first, it's like, you know, you're you're aware of everybody else's body in the room, and it's like a lot of energy. And then slowly but surely, like, you loosen up a little bit, and you're dancing, and all of a sudden, you're, like, growling and roaring and fucking crawling on the floor, and my God, it's so sexy to, like, watch people come alive. I need to go. It's I incredible. absolutely need to You'll go. You'll come with me. You'll come with me. Yeah. Now, yeah, now that it. the body's slowly starting to heal, yeah. I'll, I'll be able to go and oh, yeah. be an animal. Absolutely. Oh, God. I love it, and I love this, and I think I was getting to this point where I was so fed up with this industry. And I think all of us feel that at some point. Yeah. And I've done so many years of it and I did my small tours and I DJed and I played live and I wrote music and I did all this and I started falling. I started realizing that I was, it was becoming a chore. And I think after this accident, I, I really got to sit down for the first time where I had no choice and just be in bed. I couldn't move. I couldn't do things. And I saw this community of people who came and dropped stuff off and would text me and call and just check in and make sure I was okay. And I started to realize this whole community are people that I met because of this, because of the podcast, because of music. Um, and I just everything. re fell in love with it. And the doctors wanted me to do stuff like I was saying to get my memory back. So I started making music again for the first time in years. How does it feel? It's the greatest feeling in the world. Yeah. I got some stuff to show you later. Fuck yeah. Yeah. I'm excited. Right. You guys will hear it one day. Maybe. No, they will.
Um, so what's next? What what can we expect next? You said you have your first EP coming out. Yeah, the EP comes out November first, um, and being an independent artist is crazy because you're just like it's like going to college without a, a scholarship. It's yeah. like you're just in debt a hundred percent of the time. Um, but it also means you have autonomy and you have complete control over what you do. And I, like we just talked about, know that I need to be on stage and just interacting with people in person. And, um, and I can't afford to go on a tour. Like it's so unbelievably expensive, ridiculous. like unbelievably expensive. Oh my God. And, um, so I've been brainstorming a little bit and had the idea of, perhaps possibly doing an LA tour and like creating like a really dope tour poster but it just being local to LA and maybe you know extend to as far as San Diego or San Francisco Mm -hmm. or something but um maybe for six to eight weeks two months just play a show every week or a couple times a week and I really and bring other like local artists in and just have it be a party and it doesn't have to be like El Rey with an amazing sound system and the whole nine like just like dingy and gross and dirty but like fucking raw and fun and th- again like giving more people an opportunity to have that moment where they can just let loose and um and also just meet new artists and i, I don't want to do all the like stereotypical like the mint and peppermint and all that now, we'll do a couple of those but really just like find a dope bar in fucking echo park and like call the owner and be like hey like can you like if you want to put on an event or do whatever or like let me just have like a bar takeover and bring in a couple other really cool artists and just you know bring a sound guy in and play a set and like anyone who walks in the bar is welcome to stay and have a good time obviously but like you you promote it like you like you would a tour but it's just a little bit more rough around the edges but i think that's I think that's the art behind it. I, I remember the story that I heard of Dave Chappelle, how he would play these these huge shows and then he'd go right outside and he'd start doing comedy for people just standing around him yes. outside. Yes. And the the difference in his expression and his care for it was there was zero difference between being in front of 10,000 people and being in front of 15 people. Yeah. And I think that's what makes an artist. That's what makes somebody, that's the proof that this is not only something you do for a living, this is something you do for you. Absolutely. And that's why we all started it. Yeah, totally. You have to, in all of the chaos, you have to find the thing that like pulls you back to that like, like naive kid with a big dream, you know? And for me, like, you know, I performed a high school musical song in my kindergarten talent show like no one no mom or dad is going to force their kid to go do that like unless that's coming from you you're not doing it and I've always known that that's that's where I'm on fire and that's where like I feel the most alive and the most at home and okay fine I don't have a fucking budget I don't have any money but like I gotta make it work like something's gotta give and you realize that like you have the power. <laughs> and you're going to realize you know? down the road that you're going to remember the experiences. You're going to re- remember these wins. You're going to remember the feeling of being on stage. And you won't remember how much money you had. You won't remember who's paying for it. You won't remember all these absolutely mundane little pieces that don't stick with you. It's like a fight with a, with a loved one. You, you'll probably remember the greatest day you had with them, but you won't fucking remember that stupid ass little fight. Yeah. And you're forced to to stretch your creativity exactly because there's limited resources so it yeah like it puts some more pressure on you to like come up with all of the answers but then you learn it's like fucking crashing my car and my like me always being so codependent on my dad to handle all my car issues because i just simply cannot be bothered with fucking car shit like drives me crazy and he was like i'm in switzerland you need to go negotiate with liars and i was like okay here we go fine so me of course my nature like take nine thousand notes on like what to say and like watch youtube videos of like what gets people when they're in car negotiations that's smart and i fucking did it so god forbid my car gets totaled again and i can show up in that room and i can be like you know stick my fucking pole in the ground and be like hey i know what i'm doing and I would never have, I would never have learned if that wouldn't have happened. And even during the pandemic, like being in, an independent for the two years where I was and 
like having the TikTok moments and having no resources, no money and unable to leave your house. It was like, okay, well, iPhones exist. There's a camera on my iPhone. There's space in my apartment to move around and dance and a hundred demos sitting in my notes. Like, let's make it work. And that's like the most, you know, quote unquote, mainstream success I've had was during a time where like I had to force myself to come up with the answers. And it's hard and it's so fun and you learn so much and it's invaluable. And I'm sort of in a similar place. I do feel like my feet are a little bit more planted this time around because the music is the best it's ever been. And I feel confident about that. And I'm not like pulling shit out of my notes app from five years ago. Yeah. Um. So it's good. And I also learned from those two years. And now like maybe it feels like the stakes are a little bit higher. There's a little bit more pressure on it. But like I don't crack under pressure. So it's great. Fuck yeah. Damn, I'm so excited. I'm so excited to hear this EP. I'm so excited that you're getting back on stage and that you are absolutely kicking ass through these experiences that you could absolutely use to default to a negative standpoint in your life and a, a negative mindset. And you're you're not letting that happen. And everybody has days. You're supposed to have oh, days. Oh, I have days. And you're supposed to. That's I human. Have days. They, oh, no. I like panic attacks, crying, like, oh my God, like how many fucking day jobs do I need to get to make this work? Feeling so sorry for myself, victim mentality. And then I'm like, get up. Fuck it. Get up, coach. Like, come on. And through all this, I still see you running your fucking 40 miles every day or whatever the fuck it is. 50. Yeah, see, I was close. But you're kicking ass and I'm excited for you and I'm going to continue to be here to cheer you on. And if you guys didn't watch the last episode, I highly recommend you go watch it. You'll get a little better idea of her situation prior with her label and some of these other things. And uh, now you get to see progression. This this is what progression looks like, people. But wait, before we wrap, are we wrapping? We're about to wrap. Oh, fuck. Okay. I I could talk to you all day. Let's do another one. Okay, we'll do another one. But I want to ask you something. Yes. I don't know what it is I want to ask, but I'm going to come up with it right now. Let's do it. Okay. What has been your biggest realization in the last three months? And how have you taken that and implemented it into your life for positive change? Mm. And also... What's been the most exciting thing? Okay. I'd say that my biggest realization has been that 90% of what I feel and what I admit to the world is a choice. And I can make that choice by letting it, letting life defeat me. Or I can decide to fucking grab it by the balls and make it my bitch. Grab it by the balls <laughs> and make it your bitch. And... If I wake up deciding that I'm going to do the best fucking thing I can that day and take these little wins as these massive feelings of success, then my day will be better. And if I don't do the pieces that I know suit me and make me a better person, then I'm the asshole and that's my fault. Um, And I think I've brought that into every part of my life, whether it's relationships with loved ones, families, or my family, my friends, um, partners, whatever it is it's made me a better person and I plan on keeping that for the rest of my life and only adding to these things that make me a better person. And exciting wise, this, this, I needed this. I needed to be back. And there's nobody better to start it with than one of my best friends in the world and somebody who I look up to as a musician, as a human. And uh, yeah, this is, this is so important to me. And I've said it a million times and I'll continue to say it. And being back in this room with Griffin, who's such a fucking integral Griffin. Absolutely. He's such an integral part to the success of this podcast. And um we have some things we're working on that I think are gonna change our life and hopefully give us the opportunity to change so many other people's lives that we bring on here and build a real community. So I have no doubts. We're back, motherfuckers. We're back, motherfuckers. By the way, I'm not a bitch. I don't wear my sunglasses <laughs> inside. I'm so jet lagged right now. You're I'm good. So, I have like bags under my eyes and they're not designers. So we're keeping them on. Sorry. I guess that's my other fucking exciting thing is I'm done wearing sunglasses on here. Bradley's done wearing sunglasses. Actually, I take it back. I'm just doing it to keep <laughs> the vibe going for Bradley. <laughs> Thank you. I Someone's got to do it. <laughs> ain't gonna be anymore me anymore i blink a lot i have some issues with my eyes get the fuck over it get these the are my blue eyes now perfect. you get to see them i love you all thank you for watching november 1st 
Her new EP is coming out. Get Let's excited. Go. go check out all the new music. Go check out the collaboration. Go check out the whole catalog. And I promise you will not be disappointed. I love you. I'm I excited you. that we're doing this. And we are so back. We're so Bradley's fucking so back. back. And to everybody listening. I am Annika, and this is an experiment. Yeah, it fucking is. Yeah, I love you guys. We'll see you next week. <laughs> we're back.